further ado, let's move on and talk about eSIM um, services. And in particular, Chris is going to talk about discovery and um, and also his role, Root DNS. Over to you, Chris. Thank you for Sarah's introduction. Um, I'm Chris um, from GSMA, looking after the eSIM discovery and Root DNS. So um, next slide. So eSIM discovery is actually not entirely new service. We have been running it since 2017 and we officially changed it into a commercial service last year. Since then, um, two major SMBPs, uh, GND and Talus, among um, 17 operators of rarities and three major OEMs really um, has continued to use the service. Um, so I think um, this shows that um, the market is really supporting the service and encouraging the support um, on the eSIM ecosystem. Next slide, please. So how does eSIM really work? Um, it's in particular, eSIM discovery is that it provides a central repository for MNO to advertise um, subscription profiles to their um, consumer. So imagine you are subscribing to a particular operator with your new phone. Um, the operator declared that this new phone should get a subscription profile from me. And when the consumer turns on the device, it automatically retrieves the information from the repository. And thereafter, the device contacts the MNO system, eSIM system, in particular SMBP Plus, um, to get the profile downloaded. Next slide, please. So this is like only the beginning of the eSIM, um, eSIM service GSMA offers to the industry. Um, so in addition to eSIM discovery, there is also EUICC identity scheme, um, normally abbreviated as EIS, that EUICC manufacturer we, um, apply for their identifier. And upcoming, um, we also have EUICC security assurance, which we evaluate and give the assurance um, that EUICC are of certain level of security um, with one certification body and four license laboratory to make things happen. So today we also invite um, Fabiola from Talas to share a little bit more on the use case. So um, on to you. Okay, thank you, Chris. And well, first of all, thank you for the invitation to, to present with you in the, in the last meeting today. And yeah, so basically when we talk about eSIM, Okay. And you can turn now to the next slide. We talk about uh, the billions of devices that will be uh, connecting to cellular. Okay, So here in the slide, we see that uh, eSIM, it's uh, no longer a story of only smartwatches. Okay? So this is a slide where we show some of the models that you can go by today and that have an eSIM uh, equipped. Okay, So we see that, for example, the top uh, three smartphone makers have already launched uh, devices, uh, smartphones with eSIM. Uh, Apple in 2018, they launched their first iPhone. And up um, today, the whole lineup of Apple devices, iPhones and iWatches have an eSIM inside. But not only Apple, okay? So Samsung and Huawei last year, they launched their first devices. The, the Huawei P40 and the Samsung S Galaxy range also has eSIM. On the other hand, Google has their Pixel, the, the models two, three, and four with eSIM and Motorola Racer, very important because it has launched the first smartphone with eSIM only. Okay, so this proves that eSIM is a reality. We see mainstream devices having the, the technology inside and so therefore more devices in the future will be uh, launched with eSIM inside. So when we talk about eSIM discovery service and the benefits, the first one that comes up, it's that this service is universal and standardized. Okay, so when we talk about a solution that it's universal and standard, this basically means that uh, customers, MNOs and device makers who want to use the service uh, will have shorter time to market and uh, less integration or no integration costs. Okay, so when an operator 
wants to launch a, a device using a discovery service, uh, they really do not need to do any customization or any integration with, with the OEM of the device, okay? And vice versa, the same. When an OEM uh, enables its device to support the, SIM, the eSIM discovery service, it can be assured that this device will be able to get a subscription from any of the MNOs that are part of the eSIM discovery ecosystem, okay? Also, in terms of implementation, what an OEM and what an MNO needs to do, okay, to uh, support the discovery service is the same, regardless if the device is an open market device or a branded device. Okay, so this is good. Then in the next slide, uh, we talk about the benefit of the user experience. So one of the topics that is very important when, when eSIM was launched was um, uh, MNOs and device makers were a lot focused in the experience, wanted to, to really deliver a, a great user experience so that transition from traditional SIM cards to eSIM was as smooth as possible. And with discovery service, the, the, the experience is great. It's very intuitive. So here in this slide, I explain a bit the flow. So in the middle, we have the GSMA eSIM discovery service, okay? So basically the flow starts with the user purchasing the subscription, okay? So it goes to its favorite MNO shop or website. It subscribes to an offer. Uh, immediately after this, the operator will book a profile into the subscription management platform called SMDP Plus in the standard. And the SMDP Plus will book Okay, we'll notify the eSIM discovery service that there is a profile for this device. So whenever this device comes up, please uh, route that uh, device to me. Okay, so this is basically what the, the DP Plus will tell the eSIM discovery. Then later on, when the user powers on the device, the device will automatically query the discovery service. Okay, and will ask, hey, is there a profile? Uh, is there a subscription for me? So the discovery service will reply by sending the address of the operator that, uh, that has a subscription waiting for it. So the device will go to that address and download the profile and that's it, the user will be connected to Settler. Okay, so from the end user perspective, it's very simple. They go to the shop, they subscribe. When they power on the device, they will see a notification asking if the user wants to download the subscription, they click. And that's it, the download happens and the device is connected to server. Okay, so it's very, very simple and intuitive. And finally, um, with regards to, to IoT, okay, so this is in the next slide. Um, we, uh, this is a, a, a method, okay, so eSIM in the end, eSIM discovery service is a method, a way that customers have to download a subscri subscription into a device, okay, and, it, and for IoT devices, who are typically constrained because probably they don't have a camera to scan our QR code or are very small and don't have like the ability or capability to download an application uh, to, to use a, the other alternative method of eSIM discovery service. Um, it, it, it doesn't, uh, let's say eSIM discovery service, it's suitable for this type of devices as well. So it's a great option for IoT devices and um, who don't have okay, this type of uh, resources. Now I'd go back to Chris Lee and thank yep. you. Yep. So thanks for Fabiola's um, explanation. And I, in this slide, we talk about like what is why we really choose um, eSIM discovery. So the eSIM discovery is part of the specification. It's defined in the consumer eSIM RSP spec um, for for full industry uh, independent uh, compatibility. And of course, it is secure. It follows the GSMA SaaS compliance framework, um, which is called Security Accreditation Scheme, ensure the secure processing of um, sensitive subscription information. Currently, the eSIM discovery service provides 99.9% .9 availability, which is good and, uh, and sufficient in this point. And then we provide a pretty big capacity of 12,000 transition per minute. Um, of course, GSMA frequently reveal this and make sure we can um, process all the industry needs. Um, so that's um, all for us um, on the using discovery service for today. Um, on back to you, Sarah.